in a previous section, we were able to show that there was a relationship between uh, T and KP. And now what we want to do is expand on that idea to be able to calculate a new K value at a, a new temperature. And this idea is expressed in what's called the Van't Hoff equation, which is given here. So we can see we've gone from T1 to T2, and this is going to cause a corresponding change from K1 to K2. But the uh, interesting fact here is that we need to involve the enthalpy of the reaction. In the Van't Hoff equation, the temperature is in Kelvin, and uh, our enthalpy needs to be in joules per mole. So this is one of the tricky spots here, is you got to remember that uh, the units for energy must be joules, and this is because we are involving R, which is in uh, joules per mole Kelvin. So remember that the delta H needs to be in joules. That's something that we want to check. So the idea here is, given all these values, uh, really what we use the Van't Hoff equation for is to find a new K at a new increased temperature. So I've given you a reaction here. I've given you an initial Kp at a given temperature. I've given you the um, enthalpy for it. And notice here the enthalpy is a negative number, and that's going to have a direct um, relationship on our calculation. Um, that enthalpy is um, going to be, in this case, exothermic. And what we want to do is find a new Kp at increased temperature, so in this case 300 degrees C. So I take my Van't Hoff equation and I plug my values in. So my initial temperature is 25 degrees C or 298 Kelvin. My uh, new temperature is 300 degrees C or 573 Kelvin. Um, R is a constant and my enthalpy in this case is um, negative 92.4 kilojoules per mole, but we want to remember that we need to convert kilojoules into joules. And the way I do that is just by multiplying by 10 to the third. That's going to be equal to the natural log of K2 divided by K1. K1 was given. So what I like to do in this case, because we're looking for K2, is I take the right-hand side of the equation, this part, and I calculate it down into one number. And in this case, the units should be gone. Remember, K values are unitless. When I take this part of the equation and crunch it down, I get a negative 0.79. Then I take the inverse log of both sides, so the inverse log of negative 1.79 is 0.167, and then I go ahead and solve for K2. So K2 is unitless in this case. So let's take a second and see if our numbers make sense. As we increase the temperature, our K value actually went down. And so let's take a second and look at theoretically why that is true. When we were given the original information about the reaction, we noticed that the enthalpy was a negative number, which means that it is exothermic. And if we were to look at this, this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, and for an exothermic reaction, heat would be like a product in this case. So if we increase the temperature, Le Chatelier's principle says that this equilibrium would actually shift to the left. So as temperature goes up, Le Chatelier's principle says we shift to the side that uses up that pressure. In this case, for this reaction, the um, equilibrium would shift to the left. That means that the K value would actually go down. So for an exothermic reaction, as we increase the temperature, the K value goes down. And so we would expect the exact opposite would, would be true for an endothermic reaction. So for an endothermic reaction, if we increase the temperature, we would expect the K value to increase for um, kind of the mirror image of the reason that we were looking at here.